our next keynote he does not need any introduction at all in fact people were coming at registration booth at like 4 pm and we were like wow why are they showing up now so someone asked them like why so late they're like they're here to listen to jyoti bansal so this is the charisma our next speaker has well again he does not need any introduction but what amazes me about jyoti bansal is how he manages so many things he is now the ceo of two fast growing companies harness and traceable ai he's also running a venture fund called unusual ventures which has more than 600 million dollar under its asset and he also started an accelerator called big labs where he's actively mentoring startup jyoti what a stellar journey and i really want to understand do you have an ai artificial intelligence for yourself because for a human i don't think it's possible to do whatever you are doing so please join me in welcoming jyoti bansal to listen to his stellar journey from being an engineer to entrepreneur of two multi uh, two unicorn so jyoti bansal Hey, good evening, everyone. Can you guys hear me? All right. So, you know, the topic I picked today, and uh, someone suggested me this topic here, someone in the conference here, said, uh, can you talk about uh, how did you become an entrepreneur from an engineer? So the, I'll, I'm going to talk about that a bit here. But before we get started, I think I know the answer, but raise your hand if you're an engineer. So everyone, everyone from IIT, right? So you have to be. Raise your hand if you have started a company before. Quite a lot. And raise your hand if you want to start a company in future. Wow, quite a lot as well, right? So, you know, I was in an audience like this many years ago, and I was an engineer in my 20s. I was always like, you know, how do I start a company? And if I start a company, how do I become a successful entrepreneur? And, you know, I went through the transition from an uh, engineer to an entrepreneur, and now I'm a uh, you know, as I'm described, a successful serial entrepreneur, right? So uh, I'm going to talk about what does that does it mean a bit. But I'll I'll start with a little bit of background on me. I grew up in a small town in India, uh, in Rajasthan, Ajmer. Uh, I didn't know about IIT actually until quite late in my 12th grade. So the first time I took the IIT exam, I prepared for a week and I showed up there, and you know, I thought it would be easy, but it wasn't. <laughs> and I failed miserably. And you know, IIT is one exam you can't get, you can't, doesn't matter how you, what you do, how you do it, how smart you are. If you don't prepare for it, you're not gonna make it. So I, I learned that. Next year I worked a bit harder on it. You know, spent, I took a year off, uh, and I, ma I made into the into IIT's, uh, IIT, um, in the first 100, uh, went to IIT Delhi, did computer science degree there. But I also realized, uh, that I didn't really like the academics too much. I just wanted to get in the industry and do things. And I was very fascinated by startups. So I was, let's go to Silicon Valley. That's where all the startups are. And um, this was um, um, many years ago when we didn't really have that much of a startup ecosystem in India. Right? So I came to Silicon Valley, found a job here, and started working in startups. And I was always full of ideas on, like, let's, you know, I'm full of ideas on maybe starting companies and doing things. But I also realized that you cannot do a company if you're on H1B. So I'm sure you, uh, a lot of you have gone through that as well. It's hard to do it. So you have, I had to wait for the green card, EAD, a process I'm sure a lot of you have gone through as well. And you know, one, one day I had my EAD and I was like, okay, now I'm ready, I can do something, right? But when you do that, that I can do something, that I'm ready to be an entrepreneur, I don't really have constraints to do it and I want to do it, then you know, at that time I was in my late 20s. I was an engineer. I had no experience with business, no experience with management. I never managed anyone before. And I was going through that, like, how do I go from that engineer to becoming an entrepreneur? Right? So that's the, that's the journey I went through. And I would, I would talk about, like, you know, uh, what, what, uh, what, what are the learnings that I had through it? Uh, uh, you know, if you look at my journey, I started my first company, AppDynamics. Uh, this was in 2008. Uh, and 2017, we sold it to Cisco for $3.7 billion. Uh, uh, I started Harness, my second company after that, which is, uh, is worth, uh, you know, strangely, also $3.7 billion as of this year. And, uh, you know, my third company, Traceable, is a smaller company on that path to becoming a unicorn now. 
and you know, I have my venture fund, Unusual Ventures, where we try to teach other founders and entrepreneurs what, what, you know, what it takes to be early stage startup, right? And uh, it's exciting. And it, it, it seems like it must have been easy for me, right? So that one thing I'll tell you that it's not, it wasn't easy for me. Entrepreneurship is hard. You know, many of you have started companies, so you know it's hard. Many of you want to start companies, do keep in mind that it's hard. And there is, there, it, it's, it was hard for me as well, right? So take a minute, think about what would be the hardest part of transition from that entrepreneur, to, from an engineer to a successful entrepreneur. Managing yourself. Managing people. Delegation. Delegation. Customers. Customers. Investors selling. Hiring. Planning money. So all, all sort of things, right? So many things uh, that we need to figure out, like you know, when we do the transition. So, I'm gonna put my learnings into three, three buckets that I'll talk about. You know, first of all, when you make the transition, the first thing is just starting the company itself, right? And a lot of times, the number one question I get asked by, by a lot of engineers are, I have this idea, should I start, quit my job and start a company? How do I know, you know, that I want to, uh, that this is a company I should do? Or people ask me, like, I want to be a founder, but I don't have an idea, how do I find an idea to start a company? Right? So that's to me is like the number one thing, like how do you know that you have something? You have something that, uh, that you should do a company and that is, there's a likelihood of, uh, of it getting successful. The second thing I'm going to talk about is how do you become from that uh, engineer, individual contributor uh, to a successful leader? Like what, what things are needed and a lot of things you talked about. I'm, I'm going to talk about the mental framework that I've used to get there. And third is the mindset. The mindset to me is, is probably the hardest thing and the, the, same, the most important thing that you need to do as you make that, that make the transition, right? So let's start with the, uh, let's start with the first one. And this, by the way, this is my last slide. I don't have many slides after this. <laughs> so I'm just going to talk about it. Uh, so if you look at like, you know, what does it, how do you know that you have, a, you have some idea that you should start a company about? And that's always the, the number one challenge. Like, you know, I had, I had a lot of ideas when I was starting my first company. And eventually I learned that it really comes down to three things. One is that you have to be really passionate about the problem you want to solve. And you know, we run into problems in our lives, and in our lives, in our careers, our jobs, or all sort of things, where, right? Where it's like, you know, someone has to solve this problem better. This problem is like, the, all the solutions suck. No one is doing a good job at solving this. You know, uh, and then you start feeling this itch inside you that like, you know, someone has to solve it if, you know, why shouldn't I solve it? Like, you know, if I don't solve it, someone else will solve it anyways. Right, so that passion about solving a problem is the single most important thing. Because startups are hard, entrepreneurship is hard. If you don't, uh, if you're not passionate about solving a problem, eventually it's not going to work. You know, it's a, and the litmus test that I ask everyone to do is like, are you willing to spend next five to ten years of your life in that particular problem? You know, because that's what it takes. It's, it, there is no overnight success in a startup. There is no overnight success in entrepreneurship, right? So you have to ask that, that, that question. Are you willing to spend the next five to ten years of your life in solving something? When I, I was raising capital for my first company, AppDynamics, and I was, I was pitching to investors, and uh, one day one investor asked me, I was still in my job at that time, one investor asked me, hey, if you believe in this uh, idea so much, why are you still in your job? And I didn't have an answer. So next, uh, uh, you know, I slept over it, next morning I quit my job, because I was like, okay, I do believe in this, so I do want to solve this problem, so let's, uh, let's quit my job, right? So, but that's the, you have to commit your next five to 10 years of your life, and if you're not willing to do it, you're not passionate about the problem. That's the first litmus test. Second is, uh, do other people in the world care about solving the problem, right? So if you might be passionate about some problem, but maybe the world doesn't care about it. Maybe you want to like, you know, build a device that your dog can jump 50 feet. How many people in the world care about it? Probably not too many. Uh, so, you also have to find the problem that other people in the world care about, that people want to solve the problem. And, um, you know, that's, that's the number one reason startups fail, like, you know, that you're building something that people in the world doesn't care about. You don't have the, you don't get the product market fit there. So that's the second part of when, to knowing when you have something. The third part after that is, 
having some expertise or some unique advantage or unique insights about solving the problem better than most other people in the world. Let's say you are passionate about, let's cure cancer. Good problem to be passionate about. You know, half of the world care, cares about it, probably the whole world cares about solving the problem, but you have no expertise on it and you can't solve it better than any, anyone else in the world or most people in the world, you are going to fail. So to me, it's the, it's the, we are all engineers, right, here, everyone raised their hand. It's a simple Venn diagram. Like the Venn diagram is of three things. Are you passionate about the problem that you're willing to spend next five to 10 years of your life in doing it? Does the world care about the problem to be solved? Or many people in the world care about the problem to be solved? And third is, do you have a unique insight, expertise, advantage, experience of some kind that you can solve the problem better than most other people in the world? And if, if those three meet and you have the Venn diagram, you should not waste a day. Because any day wasted after that, you're, you know, it's, it's, it's a day wasted in getting to the, to, the, to the right outcome. You have to take the plunge. Right? So that's my, you know, my experience, my advice that I give to people. It's like, you know, if you want, when do you know you have something that you should quit your job and start a company? Or is this the right company you should be doing versus not? Is really that Venn diagram of three things there, right? Now, the second thing I will talk about is, the, you know, what's, uh, what, what, where we started today here is how do we go from that individual contributor to a leader that you can run and manage a, you know, a successful business? You know, when I started Abdonomics, I had zero experience in managing. I, I had, you know, I was a principal engineer in a, in a, in a startup. I was good in technology, good in product. I didn't know how to manage people. I didn't have business experience. When I grew up in, in, uh, in India, my dad had a small business that I was helping him with, and that was my only business experience, you know, uh, going to his mom and pop shop as a, as, a, as, a, as a kid. But other than that, I didn't have, have any business experience, right? So I think the, the, the most important thing when you think about uh, how do you transition yourself into, into that is to having that realization that there are things that you need to learn. And all of it comes down to three buckets. Technology, business, and people. Like you have to master those three buckets. You know, it's, there is no way to success if you only are good at one bucket. You know, it's, and technology is natural for us. That's the background we are on in. So for me, it was also very easy. Technology wasn't hard. I, could, I know how to build products. How, I knew how to engineer good things, etc. It's really the other two parts where, you know, I had to put a lot of time and energy. And that's where I would advise everyone that you have to think about it. And if you can think about it a bit systematically as well, like, you know, if you think of the business skills that you need to learn, business skills comes down to, one is the very basics of the business, which is like keeping the books uh, of, of some, you know, profit, loss, money, expense, uh, uh, things like that. That's, that's not hard. Like, you know, if you are engineers, figuring that out doesn't take much, uh, much. And the second thing, which is much harder, is, is raising capital, right? You know, some of you talked about, like, that's the hardest part, you know, transitioning from an engineer to entrepreneur. It, 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 is a, it is a, it's a skill that could be learned, though. You know, there's learning that you have to put, put into it, like, how do you raise capital to get your company, com company started? How do you get, you know, talk to investors? How do you convince investors to do things? And um, when I was starting up first time with Dynamics, I... I got 30 rejections from VCs before I got my first offer, right? So, yeah, to me, I didn't know, I didn't have the skill how to raise capital. I didn't know how to raise capital. You know, I didn't even know anything about how to even reach VCs or do anything. And a lot of times I, I, I find engineers uh, where, you know, I want to start a company, but I don't know where to start. You know, I don't know where to get capital. I don't know how to do, do, do it. And my experience was that you just got to start doing it. If you start doing it for your company, if, you, if it meets the Venn diagram of your a company that you want to start, a problem you want to solve, that you're passionate about, you know, that you have a unique expertise around and the world cares about that problem and you believe in that, you know, you can go and learn the skill of raising capital. And, you know, for me, every, every rejection that I had, I would ask the hard question on, okay, where did I go wrong? Why did I got rejected on this, right? And sometimes, you know, VCs will tell you the answer, like, you know, you, you, uh, you know we don't believe the market is large enough, we don't think, the, you know, you have the right founding team, or we don't think you know, your, your approach, your product, your technology is, uh, is, is interesting enough or good enough. Or sometimes people will be like, you know, you're too early or you know, uh, just uh, random things like that. Right? Or and they won't give you an answer, but you have, you have to find a way to learn from it, right? That what, what is the learning uh, to raise capital? And I think we can all, all learn from it. And that's, that definitely is, a, is, is an experience we have to uh, 
you all have to go through. The third skill after that on business, and someone mentioned it here, is, is sales, is selling. And I do think that is the, probably the single most important thing that everyone has to learn as an engineer, and that's the hardest thing to learn. You know, we, we, when we grow up in, in India, our parents don't ask us to go become a salesperson. Right? They like, you know, go become an engineer, become a doctor, maybe become a chartered accountant, but no one sends us to, you know, go to school and learn how to do selling. And that is the number one business skill that you need to learn as an, as an engineer. Uh, and it starts by appreciating selling. You know, when, when we start in, you know, coming from our backgrounds in India as engineers, we start with not appreciating selling. I didn't appreciate selling. To me, like, you know, it was kind of a, almost an insulting kind of thing if someone called me a sales, salesman or salesperson. But that's, that's something we have to reset. Like, if you want to become good, good at entrepreneurship and you want to be successful at it, you have to appreciate and then learn to be good at selling. Because there is no business without revenue. And revenue doesn't come until you sell your, your products that you're building. And you have to learn how to sell them. You have to, you have to teach other people how to sell them. And you have to run sales organizations, marketing organizations, so that you can go uh, and take your products to market. And to me, that is the single most important thing if you want to become, uh, from an engineer to be a successful entrepreneur, that you have to put the time and effort and investment, first in appreciating the skill of selling, second is learning it, and third is getting better and better and perfecting it. Now, everything that you do as an entrepreneur is, is selling. You know, you're selling to, to investors to raise capital. You're selling to people to hire them into your team. You're selling to keep them in your team, you know, because every three months, the people will be like, why should I stay in this startup? You're having so many problems. And you have to sell them again. And you, you have to sell to your customers. You have to sell to, you know, uh, media, analysts, all sort of people you have to sell. And you have to learn, learn that as the, the one skill as you go through that, uh, that transition. And that, that was the hardest skill for me as well. You know, it's, so it's, it's, no, it's not like, you know, uh, it was easy for me. It was, that was a hard thing that when I went through my, my transition uh, from, a, from an engineer there as well, right? The, the last part is, is people, right? You know, the, the one thing that a lot of times we start with that the strong belief in ourselves that we can do it all. But the reality is you can't build any business of any, any value yourself, right? You have to bring people on board. You have to, people bring, um, uh, to bring people on board, and you have to really become good at the art of working with people in a very, very productive, uh, effective kind of way, right? Just hiring right people, you know, managing people, you know, motivating them, leading them, exciting them, uh, uh, you know, all of those aspects of managing people and working with people is really the only way your business was going, will going, uh, is going to grow, right? So th these are the skills we need to do the transition. So a lot of people would th say, hey, this sounds a lot. How, how am I going to learn all this thing? And how am I going to become good at all this thing? You know, should I do, go and do an MBA and maybe I'll learn in the MBA? Should I read some book? You know, maybe it will all be in the book. The reality is there is no MBA that can teach you. There is no book that can teach you. You have to f create a mindset of learning on your own. And learning on your own means learning from others, learning from the, the, the you know, what I call mini MBAs. Like, you have to build that mindset of, can you do a mini MBA on a topic in 15, 20 days? Because that's the only way you would survive and get that from the, you know, from an engineer to learning all of these skills that I talked about, that you need to become good at this, 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 all of these things, right? That you have to figure out a way how you learn fast and how do you do these mini MBAs as you go, right? So I'll give you an example, like a basic example. You know, you, you build a product and you want to figure out what is the pricing strategy for this product. How should I price it? And you have no experience doing that. There is, you know, and you're not going to go back to a business school and do an MBA or read a book and that will tell you all. You have to do a 15-day MBA to become an expert at it. Expert to the level that you could, you could, you know, in 15 days, and you want to be at a good level of expertise, right? So, for example, and my, my trick for that always been, go and find the experts, go and find good people to talk to. Talk to as many people, read up what you need to read, and figure it out. Figure it out in 15, 20 days, that's your MBA. And you know, you, so all entrepreneurial learning of all the skills I talk about is the number one skill to learn is the, how do you do those 15 day MBAs? 15 day MBA on a particular topic. You know, how do you find pricing for your product? How do you, you know, sell into a new market? How do you hire a salesperson? How do you do 
you know, so many different things. You know, how do you fire your first employee who have never, no experience firing someone? You know, so don't go in the trap of that you have to go and read all sort of books and do a, to go back to college to learn these things. You're all ready as long as you have that mindset of 15 day MBA on the topic that you need to, uh, need, need to address, right? So that's, that would be my advice. Like that's the, the, the uh, important thing that you all need to, to, to learn. We all need to learn. I had to go through that. And you know, that's what I feel was uh, uh, you know, the most effective for me. And finally, I'm going to talk about mindset. You know, we can, we can have the, you know, the right startup idea, the right startup opportunity that we took the plunge on. Uh, you know, we, if we figure out the mindset of learning through these mini MBAs and as we go, um, and we get all the skills that we need to succeed as an entrepreneur, we still need the right mindset to succeed. You know, and that's always the hardest thing. The, the, the entrepreneur mindset comes down to three things in my mind. Number one is the, is the courage to handle the unknowns. You know, it's, it, we are all afraid of unknowns, right? Unknowns is the primary thing we are all afraid of always. Like, you know, you don't know what's gonna happen, uncertainties, unknowns. Entrepreneurship is all about unknowns, right? You have no, uh, you have no certainty of knowing anything when you start, start something. And there are so many unknowns that are coming every month, every quarter, every, every six months, every year, and it's just full of unknowns. So you have to create that mindset of, the, that you have the courage to go through the unknowns and you're not afraid of the unknowns, right? And that's the, the, the first part of the mindset that need, to, need, uh, that need to happen. The second part of the mindset is, is perseverance. You know, and people think of like, you know, what makes one entrepreneur succeed more than another entrepreneur? A lot of time it comes down to that. Like, you know, if you're in the right market, right problems, right, uh, uh, you know, uh, all kind of the right timing, everything, it's like who has the more, uh, more perseverance through hard times is who succeeds. People, when people think of startups, you know, and people think of successful startups, people think of AppDynamics or, you know, my other company, Harness, now, people think everything is going well, everything is going perfect, like, you know, we have no problems, no challenges. That's, that's never the case, right? You know, things, if you, if you are inside there, you think, you know, things are, things are going crazy all the time. You would think like, you know, uh, you, your business may shut down any time. You know, you have the, these competitors coming in. You have, you know, there's some key cust uh, customer left you, some key employee left you. Things are falling apart almost all the time and things are going wrong. And that's where entrepreneurship becomes that a test of, can you go through those hard times and persevere through it? Because it's, it's easy to, to, to give up. And you know, I have gone through that many, many times myself. Like you know, when you are in those moments, you are like, why am I doing this thing? This thing is, is crazy. And you, know, you have to persevere through it. And that's where I, I talk about that Venn diagram of you should not even start a company if you're not passionate about spending your uh, you know, five to 10 years in solving that problem. Because when those hard times happen, which will happen, you're not gonna go through it and not pers gonna persevere through it if you're not passionate about the problem to begin with. Right, so that's, that's the, the, the second mindset change you know, that needs to happen as, a, as, a, as an entrepreneur. The third thing is the growth mindset. Raise your hand if you know what growth mindset is. A lot of you. Growth mindset is when you, you, you d do something new and interesting and you know, a new challenge without worrying about the outcome. That what, n it doesn't matter what the outcome is, you will learn from it, you will grow from it. Right? And entrepreneurship is all about growth mindset. That you have to keep having that mindset on that I'm gonna take the new challenge and go for it. And every day I'm gonna take the new challenge every week, every month, because there are new challenges that are coming constantly without obsessing too much about the outcome because you're learning from it, you're growing from it, and you're growing fast and, uh, from it. Right? So that's, that's the core of the mindset that you need to, uh, to build there you know, when it comes to, comes to entrepreneurial mindset. right? And that would be my, my takeaways here. Like when people ask me this question, you know, how did you went through from being an engineer to a, to a successful entrepreneur? What were the challenges that you faced? And I look at, it really comes down to those three things. You know, find when is the right time for you to start something, you know, that when you really know that there is something in it. And you know, you are, you are setting yourself to fail as an entrepreneur if you go into a problem that you're not passionate about, or you're going into a problem that the world doesn't care about, or you're going into a problem where you have, you have no insights or expertise or advantage in, in succeeding there. So find the right problems uh, to succeed. That's the, the first thing. Uh, and you know, that makes your transition from that engineer to entrepreneur 
much easier, much smoother, you know, and worth it. Uh, the second thing to do is to create the learning uh, mindset of uh, developing your skills, doing those mini MBAs and ability to do those fast, right? Where you have to learn new skills. You, you would have skills, uh, and people ask me sometimes, hey, should I wait? And then I can learn all of this and I can have experience in my job to, you know, to learn these business skills before I can start a company. And I tell people, like, if you, if, if you, have, if you have that Venn diagram of the right idea, right, where you, that meets all the three requirements, don't wait. You can start the company and learn everything when, as you go. Uh, but, you know, if you don't have that weight, you know, don't jump into something when you, where you're not passionate about or, you, you know, the world doesn't care about, etc. But uh, there is no point in waiting in learning the skills. You can learn them on the fly as long as you have the right learning mind around it, right? And the third thing is that mindset, that we got to have that mindset of, like, you know, can we uh, overcome the fear of unknowns through courage? Can we have the... Um, uh, do we have the perseverance to go through hard, challenging times, which will happen in any startup uh, all the time? And third is, do we have the growth mindset that we are not obsessing with outcome, but that we also are going, going to, to learn through that, uh, uh, doesn't matter what, uh, what the outcome is, right? And if that happens, it's, entrepreneurship is fulfilling, right? You know, so many of you have been entrepreneurs and you want to be entrepreneurs. I'll tell you, it's, it's fulfilling. The world needs entrepreneurs. Like, we need, there are so many problems to be solved. And we all can have different problems that we are interested, uh, you know, passionate about. And we need to solve those problems. So I would say, like, you know, uh, uh, engineers are the best people to take the, make the transition. And you should not be afraid and, uh, and think about making the transition. And it's very possible. And uh, that's what I would uh, wish you all the best in solving some of these problems. Thank you all.